In a few short days, Rocket Lab will be reporting their Q1 earnings for 2025. Let's take a look at what to expect going forward, not just for Q1, not just for the full year, but further out as well. My name is Scott. Welcome to the channel. Let's talk Rocket Lab. Starting with revenue, Rocket Lab guided for a Q1 total revenue range of 117 to 123 million, with year on year increases in both space systems and launch revenue. During Q1, Rocket Lab delivered 20 satellites to orbit across five launches, including the two in February and the three within a 12 day span during March. The combined value of these five launches is expected to be approximately 37 million representing an average selling price of 7.5 million, marking a quarter over quarter change of negative 12% and a year over year change of positive 14%. Looking ahead and subject to change, we have the IQPS launch in May, Hawkeye and Capella expected for June, and the second Gen 3 satellite deployment for Black Sky outlined to take place in Q2. Revenue for these four launches is estimated to be 29 million, marking an average selling price of 7.1 million, a 3% decrease year over year, and an understandable 24% decline compared to the five launches that we saw in Q1. There are several launches in Rocket Lab's backlog that are also expected for 2025, but it's unclear for many of these if 2025 means like sometime in the first half of the year or like. Ideally, hopefully prior to December 31st, but only if everything goes off without a hitch. So it's not impossible that one or more of these launches ends up happening in Q2, but it's also not impossible that these launches slip into a later date instead. So as of Q1, there were two neutrons and 34 electrons outlined to be in the backlog, including the recently signed second batch of four launches for IQPS. This is expected to mark a new all-time high average selling price for the electrons and backlog, which is just shy of 8.5 million. So as mentioned in a previous video, despite no longer guiding for the number of launches within the quarter, I was under the impression that Rocket Lab was indirectly guiding for five launches within Q1, all of which we saw happen throughout the quarter. So as long as this holds true, the five launch assumption for Q1, then we also have a clear indication of what to expect for their space systems business. So overall, Rocket Lab, they generally land in the upper revenue range of, or upper, the upper range of the revenue guidance. So subtracting 37 million for launch from this upper mid-range guidance of 122 million arrives us at $84 million for space systems revenue, marking negative 7% quarter over quarter and positive 40% year over year. For forward space systems revenue, we can expect Rocket Lab to return to sequential growth in Q2, driven by strength in their space systems business. So sequential growth, this could be interpreted in one of two ways, year over year or quarter over quarter. So using the launch revenue from the four launches expected in Q2, then subtracting from either time frame, this outlines a baseline space systems revenue of either 78 or 93 million. This is a fair bit of margin, however, so let's dial this in by first zooming out. For Q1, a total revenue of 122 million highlights negative 8% growth quarter over quarter and positive 31% year over year. We won't spend too much time in this video worrying about the translation to bottom line. If you're interested in Rocket Lab's profitability, the valuation models that are used to make these videos are available via Patreon or the recently set up YouTube memberships. These valuation models go all the way up to 2030 and include everything from KPIs to price targets to insider ownership. To keep this video more concise, however, we're just going to focus more towards the top line. For Q2, depending how Adam's commentary is interpreted, we're arriving at baseline total revenue of either 106 or 122 million. As we generally do, we're gonna operate under the more conservative set of numbers, which in this case ties nicely into the overall picture for the full year of 2025. As of 2024 end, Rocket Lab's backlog totaled 1.07 billion, of which 681 million was related to space systems and 386 million was related to launch services. 
Of this backlog, approximately 50% is expected to be recognized within 12 months, with the remaining 50% to be recognized beyond 12 months. So indirectly guided here is a 2025 revenue expectation of 534 million. As of December 31st, there were 21 known launches on track for 2025. This represents approximately 164 million in revenue or $7.8 million per launch. Assuming this to be directionally accurate, we can expect space systems revenue for 2025 to be 370 million marking a 19% increase compared to full year 2024. Circling back to launch revenue, as mentioned previously, there was another batch of four IQPS launches that were signed during Q1, three of which are expected to launch within 2025, with the fourth launching in 2026. So adding these three new IQPS launches to our current framework brings full year launch revenue to 189 million representing 7.9 million for each of the 24 launches and a 51% increase in revenue compared to full year 2024. Putting this all together, Net's total revenue expectations for full year 2025 to be 558 million, marking a 28% increase compared to full year 2024. Worth mentioning, however, there were several announcements in Q1 that could prove to be incremental to 2025 revenue. These announcements include a contract with Airbus to provide 200 space-grade solar panels for the OneWeb constellation, customer onboarding for the recently announced Flatalite platform, as well as several new components, including an expansion of Rocket Lab's Frontier radio systems, two next-generation software suites, a standardized solar array platform, and last but certainly not least, the new 5NMS reaction wheel. This video would be off-brand if we didn't speculate about reaction wheels, so let's get to that in just one minute. For launch services, we can also expect to see a series of announcements throughout the year, driven by the on-ramp of several new opportunities, including the selection from Kratos to deliver hypersonic test launches for Department of Defense, the first of which was recently announced to be signed, Neutron's inclusion to NASA's Vader contract, the $5.6 billion NSSL program, as well as a joint announcement detailing Rocket Lab being selected by the UK's Ministry of Defense for its $1.3 billion framework to develop hypersonic capabilities for the United Kingdom, alongside being selected by the United States Air Force to participate within its $46 billion program designed for the acquisition of innovative technologies, engineering services, and technical solutions. Expect announcements from these programs over the next several months, quarters, and even years. One final revenue driver, though inorganic, comes in the form of the intended acquisition of German laser communications provider Minaric. While there isn't a lot of recent information to go off, Minaric was reported to have a $22 million revenue rate as of 2023 end, with 800 terminals in backlog, representing 80 to $200 million in revenue. Now, assuming this to be a two-year backlog runs Minaric at a revenue rate of 40 to $100 million per year. To be cautious, it's advised to go with the lower end of this assumption due to the well-known production issues going on behind the scenes. These 40 to $100 million per year estimates seem on track given the 75 to $150 million price tag for this acquisition. Alongside the Minaric news was the announcement of a $500 million at the market equity offering program. How Rocket Lab planned to roll this out, however, will ideally be detailed on the call. All right, tinfoil hats on, let's get back to those reaction wheels. So we've been operating under the assumption that 2000 reaction wheels were delivered in 2024. This assumption was made from a comment in November that 2000 reaction wheels were on track to be delivered in 2024. More recently, there was an update that only nearly 1,000 reaction wheels were delivered last year instead. So what this tells me is that the customer must have seen some kind of delay. In unrelated news, Amazon's Kuiper seems to have seen some kind of delay. <laughs> 
Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, comment what you're looking forward to from earnings and um, be sure to check out the Patreon. See you guys in the next one. Hope you have an awesome day.